Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you my rock paper scissors project which is the first project in the foundations JavaScript of the Odin project. Now this one is quite challenging for your first one uh, but it is a real milestone to reach and I think it could be quite a fun one as well. Uh, so this is the lesson here. There's quite a bit of content to go through and they really do help you set this up. There are two actual lessons on this. So the first time you see it, there will be some a little bit of hand-holding to get the basic game loop working. And then in a few lessons time, you will revisit your, your game loop and build out a little more um, functionality in it. For example, keeping game score and having a reset button and ending the game at a certain score. But anyway, let's take a look at mine. So here is my repository for it on github it's called jankenpon which is just japanese for rock paper scissors uh, so i have my readme file here with some attributes to some of the music and images that i used and no you don't need music but i thought i'd put it in there for fun uh, let's let's take a quick look at it so this is it as it stands it is not, you, you really don't need to play around with it and make it kind of fancy and quirky like this. I just wanted to have fun with it and make it a little bit funky. So, you know, I'll, I'll go through some of the things that I did. I, I added music on auto load. Not best practice, but it's, you know, it's for me. It was fun. Uh, and it sounds a bit like this. So, yeah, it's kind of going with the Miami Nights funky uh, dance off theme. And then I got the obligatory GIF of Pulp Fiction. Uh, why not? And on load, if you did, I'm not sure if you saw there, there's this animation of this text here, which I thought would be fun just to throw in some text animation for to try it. And then I have my, th my three buttons that you choose, rock, paper, or scissors. And when you hover over those, they, uh, they change from a circle to um, kind of a radius square. And then I have a reset button here. Uh, so Gameplay is very simple, as you'd expect from what rock, paper, scissors. I hit rock, and it says, oh, I lost. Paper beats rock, I lose. Computer one, me zero. I hit paper, two zero to the computer. Three zero to the computer. So I got one. Rock beats scissors, I win. I get one. So it's a tie on that one. Okay, it's now two, three, 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 four, three. Oh, and I outdance the computer. That was uh, very lucky. And you can see the reset button has changed and is now a glowing red. And these buttons, while the hover works, you, can, you can't click them. Clicking it does nothing now. So I disabled that until you hit reset. Once you hit reset, you click them and then the game starts again. So that's it. Very, very straightforward interface. But I'll uh, take you now to my repository and we'll look at the files here. So this is the index HTML. It's pretty straightforward. It's your basic, your, you know, your general HTML template, a link to the style sheet, uh, my HTML, and then a link to the script. And you put your script tag at the bottom because you want your HTML to load first. You don't want your script trying to run before your HTML uh, DOM, uh, the object model has been built. So here we have basic divs. We have uh, one for the music toggle on and off, one for the title, which is one that I found online, kind of a retro neon font, uh, another one for the uh, Pulp Fiction GIF, and then the intro where the animated text comes through. And then I have divs for the buttons, rock, paper, and scissors. And then I have a div here for outputs, which is blank when you first load the page, but these divs here get used by JavaScript and the JavaScript will throw um, the text that I tell it to in these p tags. And then we have the reset game button down here with an ID reset dash game. And I also load in my music here and have my footer. So we'll take a quick peek at the CSS. There's some things in the CSS file that certainly were not taught or part of this lesson. I just kind of played around with things that I found on the web um, just because it was the first time I'd ever really used it. I thought I just you know, wanted to put it into practice. So to lay out the page, I'm using Flexbox and <coughs> nothing really outstanding here that you wouldn't have seen until perhaps when we get to 
this intro um, ID. So that is where the animated text uh, happens. This, this is what causes that text to animate. So it's using keyframes uh, to get the typing effect as well as to get a blinking cursor at the end. I found this on the web. You can search through, there's tons of resources out there where you get to see people's CSS libraries and all the cool things that it can do. And you can use them in your own projects um, as long as you attribute people. Um, but, and you know, just, just play around with them, see, see what you like. Uh, nothing else again in these. Uh, that's too amazing. Now, these three buttons here, I did have to play around with a bit to get my images to fit with inside the circle nicely. So that's what's happening uh, in here. And then I wanted, as you hover over it, I wanted the radius to change from circle to radius to square. So that's what's happening in here. Um, and then nothing else really special, except for the reset button. The reset does change from um, an idea reset game to a class of reset focus. And I could have used probably a class of both of these, but I chose to go with an ID and a class uh, for whatever reason. But this class here, reset focus, this down here is what gives it that glow, that glowing uh, kind of strobing effect, slow strobing effect. Again, I found that online. Please take a look at these. I will link to the repository in the comments. So if I am moving a bit quickly for you, you can always come on here. You can clone this repository and play around with it if you like. Okay, let's look at the script file now. So if you can hear my newborn son in the background here, I think it must be feeding time. Okay, so this is the script uh, file here. So it's very rudimentary in the way I've laid it out. Uh, it's quite procedural and there's quite a bit of repetition, but you know what, that's okay. It was my first game and what isn't broken, I'm not gonna fix until there's a need to refactor. Um, so uh, what well, you'll see though, there are areas that it's inefficient and it could certainly be um, made more efficient. And the DRY dry, do not repeat yourself principle would certainly uh, apply here. So I start off by setting some variables, player score and computer score to zero. So this, this just tracks the score of the computer and the player. And then I have a, uh, an array with rock, paper or scissors as the selection for the computer. So these are global scope variables that are used in the functions that I will talk about in a minute. And then I declare some more variables. <coughs> and you could use constant, obviously not for values that are changing, but this could be a constant, for example, but you know, in, in these early days, I was just using let because I could um, just to keep things simple. So I, de I declare a rock button function, paper button, scissor button function, and this is just pointing the JavaScript to these elements in the HTML using get element by ID. And then a commentary box, which changes to tell you if you won or lost, uh, you know, paper beats rock, for example, uh, that's um, defined here. And then the scoreboards, computer and player are defined here and then the reset button the small reset button during gameplay is defined here and so on the reset button I add an event listener so when it's clicked it will execute the reset game function and then the same with the rock buttons have event listeners for when they're clicked it's going to play uh, a game for rock paper or scissors so what I did as my game logic here is I actually defined a separate function for rock, paper, or scissors. Uh, and then each one of those will um, alter the player or computer score accordingly and check to see where that score is at. So what I did is I defined the computer selection here, which is a random selection of rock, paper, or scissors from this array using the math for math random uh, methods in JavaScript. And then there is if else statements here. So if the computer, we know that the, the if it's play game rock, we know that the human player is selected rock. So we then can compare if computer is rock, then we fill the HTML um, uh, tag with it's a tie. Else if the computer selects paper, then we fill the HTML tag uh, as paper beats rock, you lose. And we give the computer a plus one score. Else, we know that rock beats scissors and the human player won and we plus one their score. 
And then once that's complete, the function goes on to <coughs> give your score or update your score on the screen and the computer score on the screen and runs a check to see if the player score or computer score is equal to five, then executes the stop game function. Now, this is a pretty big function and it could certainly be broken down into uh, like th th this logic here, I think to check game um, status could certainly be broken down into another function, but uh, that's something to do for a, a rainy day. Again, uh, play game paper, very similar logic. Uh, it's just comparing computer selection to paper and the same for scissors. So those three are pretty much the same and that's repetition. That you know, I think there's probably a far more efficient way to do that than I have done that. Uh, but the challenge here is that the computer selection, you don't know what that is. It could be one of three things and so could the player's selection. So you're still gonna have to do some kind of comparison um, multiple comparisons I think. Okay the stop game function so once a stop game is executed because the the score one of the scores is equal to five it's checking to see if computer score is greater than player score and <coughs> if it is then it says the computer outdanced you in the commentary otherwise it says you outdanced the computer then it resets the player and computer scores to zero as well as the scoreboards telling you what the score is uh, and then it removes the click or the event listeners to the rock, paper, and scissors button so you can't click them anymore, which uh, you don't want to happen when the game has stopped. And it resets the, uh, the cl oh, so it sets the class name for the reset button to reset focus. So now it's gone from the small reset game text to that glowing red reset text. So this is talking, uh, this is actually using the CSS to change the way that that, uh, that button is displayed or that text is displayed. And then the reset game function. Uh, so if you are in the middle of the game, and you want to reset it, it sets the scores to zero. It clears the, uh, the scoreboard and the commentary. It again removes the event listeners to the button so you can't click them anymore. Um, oh, sorry it adds the event listeners to the buttons so, so that you can begin clicking them again. And then uh, the reset class name changes back to the small text, back to the ID. Okay, and then finally, we just have some uh, JavaScript here for the music control. Uh, so I let uh, define this variable music to the my music ID in HTML and then the control is the text in the music div. And when the control is clicked, it executes control music function, which has a ternary here just saying, um, if music's pause, play music, else um, execute the music pause function. And I believe these are actually, so this music.play, music.pause are things that are built into JavaScript. I don't have to define these uh, anywhere in this script. And that was something that I, uh, I learned online. Okay, that's it, it's been quick. I'm limited to 15 minutes in these videos, so I have to run through them pretty quickly. But if you do have any questions, please uh, click on the link to this repository in the description and take a look around or leave a comment and I'll be happy to get back to you.